Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me John Jordan. Today I'm looking at My Crypto Heroes again. It is a game I have looked at in the past um, um, but I kind of wanted having played the game a bit more and got a bit more involved in it um, to kind of take a video and kind of actually look at how uh, complex uh, blockchain games are. Um, My Crypto Heroes is interesting for many in many respects. Uh, mainly it is the most popular uh, blockchain game that kind of depends exactly what's going on with other blockchain games, but but historically um, it's been around for um, over a year now, and it generally has um, about two to three thousand uh, daily active wallets. Um, that's on the on the blockchain side of things. It runs on the Ethereum blockchain, and those are people who are um, spending a tenth of an ETH, um, about twenty dollars a month, uh, and it's, it's called the Prime subscription model. And if you're playing this game seriously, you need to be on this Prime subscription model because it gives you lots of kind of extras. In, in like free-to-play mobile games or free-to-play games, you have this v kind of VIP levels. I mean, it's very similar to that. Um, that stuff's very common in Japan, which is why My Crypto Heroes, which is developed in Japan, kind of uses this mechanic. Um, what's interesting about My Crypto Heroes, however, is that while it uses the blockchain for some elements. Um, it is also centralized, so you can play this game without using the blockchain at all. Um, and often if you see the developer, they will quote figures of 7,000 MAUs um, and uh, 3,000 subscribers. And the difference between those two is the is um, the people who are just playing kind of effectively off-chain. And you can play this game totally off-chain. So um, one example of this, I'm just going to get rid of these because this is confusing. But um, So these are my assets here. So, um, so these are my characters. Um, that, that I have in the game, and we can see here. Um, so there's seven. How um, many we've got here? So that's eight characters I've got. Um, I don't know why that one's not showing up properly, um, but we can see um, most of them. So uh, six of them are have this N uh, uh, kind of uh, notation, and these ones are all off-chain characters. So some of these you can, some of these you get for free, like these these ran these kind of like generic ones here. Um, but these, these other ones you can kind of win in the game or they have their own um, in-game currency called GUM, um, which you can actually buy with real money or cryptocurrency, and then you can buy these characters. But these characters are centralized characters just within the game. You can't do anything on these. Um, and these, But these ones here, these are ones I've actually bought on the OpenSea marketplace. Um, and you can see that this is a common character and this is an uncommon character. Um, uh, and... It's a little bit confusing, actually. So we can see here. This, this. I'm clicking on this box here. This is my Crypto Heroes world. So this is what's showing. What's going? These are my characters in the world. Um, my heroes. Some of which are on the blockchain. Some of which are not. But if I go here and click on Ethereum network. So looking uh, at my wallet, it will it will um, come up with this character here, which I bought just bought on on OpenSea. But this character, um, she's actually um, being held in my Ethereum wallet. And if I want to use her in my Crypto Heroes, I have to transfer her to My Crypto Heroes World. So effectively, um, I'm using here the Dapper wallet um, from uh, the uh, Dapper Labs guys behind Crypt, uh, Crypto Kitties and uh, Cheese Wizard. So um, I have to do a transaction. And effectively, this is uh, because the uh, My Crypto Heroes people, they are um, they're running their own side chain. So effectively, they have their own kind of Loom network or, or Matic Lab, uh, Matic, sorry, Matic network sort of uh, sidechain that they control and that connects to the Ethereum network but that means you have to pass assets between um, the network uh, in order to kind of put them in the game um, and this is like a massive friction point um, because one often you have to pay gas in this case I don't have to pay gas because if you use a dapper wallet you don't have to pay gas um, they, they kind of cover that gas for you but obviously the other thing is now I have to wait for this to transfer. This is currently on the Ethereum network. Now I have to wait for it to transfer into um, into the my Crypto Hero sidechain, and that's obviously a transaction that takes time. And we can see here. I don't know why they keep having this. Oh, go away. Um, uh, yeah, so we have to kind of wait for that to happen. Um, just for the purposes of the video, there are these hero characters. You also have extensions. These are this is like gear. Um, so th th this is all gear within the game. None of this is blockchain gear. Um, so this is kind of gear you use to um, equip your character. And there's also land. So like a lot of blockchain games has lot have land. So there's also land here. So there's quite a lot going on within My Crypto Heroes. But what's very interesting is I think what we actually find, if we consider what's going on with My Crypto Heroes, is most people are playing the game 
and they may be even spending kind of this this tenth of an ETH a month to get this kind of uh, this prime um, subscription model, which is which is well worth it if you're doing if you're playing the game. But actually, we have this totally other um, game going on. We could call it a meta game, and that's actually not going on within my Crypto Heroes because we have this friction of bringing characters in and out. Uh, of the of the my crypto hero side chain and the ethereum main chain um, which is just a hassle um, and i think you know the one thing we've seen about most games is anything that is a hassle anything that's a friction doesn't happen so this is the game that goes on within my crypto heroes uh but there's also a game that happens uh outside my, my crypto heroes which but uses the characters okay so now we're looking at open c and this is actually open c uh is viewing my wallet. So we can see here some things I've got in this wallet, got some cheese wizards. Um, and you can see here, there's this character um, that we just looked at um, within kind of my crypto heroes, we were viewing the kind of same wallet, um, still waiting for that transaction to go through. So this one is still showing as being held on the Ethereum uh, blockchain rather than the my crypto heroes side chain. Hopefully that will change in a minute. Um, but what's interesting is um, we can go and look at, um, so this is OpenSea, this is a um, third party or second party, if you want to call it, it's, 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 a, it's an independent marketplace. And we can see here, if we look at, this is the ranking of all the blockchain um, games or all, all the blockchain projects um, and what's going on in them. And My Crypto Heroes has the, um, oh, this is just Ethereum um, dApps, I should say. So you have 302 ETH um, in terms of the weekly uh, volume. Um, and uh, the average price in ETH there, and you can see of my crypto heroes are at about 2,000, just over 2,000 owners of 42,000 assets. So, um, what's interesting is although we have this kind of a game where, where people are playing and a lot of them aren't on the blockchain, we have this other game where people are selling. Um, so, these are the extensions. These are, this is an extension, this is um, like a gear, and then we have these hero characters. Um, we can see they're selling for different prices. We can, so, these, this is recently listed. Um, probably easier if we just look at the hero characters actually because it's a bit clearer and um, so we can see that these these hero characters so these are ones you could buy and then if you wanted to you could bring in the game but actually what's happening I think in the majority of these cases is people are um, just trading these characters now you might buy a character on the ethereum blockchain bring it into the game level it up and then trade it so you can kind of create value that way but I think in lots of cases what's just happening here is um, people are just kind of a uh, trading uh, we have a look at some prices um, that have been uh, had recently. And what's interesting is my, my crypto heroes is, is, is the kind of one game, I think, um, in, in, in all of blockchains at, games at the moment where there is a, a really solid market in NFT trading. So these are NFT, uh, NFT token, non-fungible tokens. All of these are unique, even though obviously some of them are the same kind of character. All of them are unique individual um, kind of blockchain items different levels and this sort of stuff. Um, and we can see here, I mean, some of them are going for kind of 0.3. Um, Einstein here, it's last sold for 55 ETH, 53 ETH. So we can see here, you know, there's, you know, we have some idea that uh, these are high end, these are high end NFTs that are selling for between 47.5 and 55 um, ETH. Um, and we have these, you know, all some down here, you know, selling for different prices. We have Napoleon up here, 40 ETH. And it is kind of interesting that we have these about 2,000 people. 2,000 wallets at least who are holding these my crypto hero characters and there, there is quite a lot of trading going on on that so th that's kind of the that's kind of the meta game um, we can look at it in a different way actually we can look at my crypto hero so this is another site nonfungible.com um, this is just like a data site and we can see here these are the sales of uh, my crypto heroes um, 24 trans 244 transactions in the past week we can just start to see some of these some of these ones that have been sold so you're picking up the same data really as we were looking at in in um open sea but we if we come down here we can see here we go so that was the character um i bought um so bought for um, just under 80 dollars um, but we can see there's quite a lot going on here um yeah some of them this one last sale was five eth and it is interesting so it kind of depends i guess a little bit on your philosophy about what, about what blockchain games are and some it might be what's the game you know what, what am i doing in the game what's the kind of process and in my crypto heroes you're kind of like just kind of grinding out um, leveling up your characters um and and um maybe you know getting getting gear and uh, and kind of just doing that kind of grindy RPG thing. There's another part of the game and some people may be playing both, but um, the other part of the game is this kind of uh, uh, 
more about kind of the sale, more about, um, I guess we could call speculative um, uh, aspects. So you're, you're buying characters um, and then kind of waiting to see, um, you're buying characters when they, new ones come out. Um, you're, you're looking at kind of pricing models. You're looking to see when new um, people are kind of coming into the game and, and what they're going to buy. Um, and a blockchain game, I guess you could argue, um, can en encompass both of those things and probably needs both of the, those things to be tied together. If you had no one playing the game, then that would probably reduce the um, the liquidity of the speculative marketplace. Um, but the speculative marketplace kind of does live on its own as well, um, as new flows um, of just people get interested. And I think certainly as non-fungible tokens get more press, um, non uh, My Crypto Heroes is, is, is a game that clearly has um, already has a lot of uh, kind of uh, interest in it. Uh, and more interesting, I guess, um, because these are not totally unique items that we can kind of see, they are kind of the same, some of the same characters, although the levels might be different. Um, we can kind of start to see, get some idea of kind of pricing and then how much of these, how much of the, you know, what the price of these kind of things should be, um, which is kind of much harder to do on something like, like CryptoKitties, I suppose. So there we go. Um, a, a, a video about My Crypto Heroes. Again, it's a really hard game to get into. I wouldn't say I play it every day, um, but I think it's kind of one that if you're interested in the, in the kind of, DAP sector in the blockchain game sector. It's one really worth getting to grips with because it encompasses a lot of the complexity of the scene. I think too often we see blockchain games as being these very simple um, NFT uh, marketplaces. Um, or we, we see, you know, blockchain games as being something that should everything should run on a blockchain, uh, not so much about NFTs, uh, more about kind of just decentralized gaming in, in total. Um, and My Crypto Heroes kind of encompasses both of these things in, in a slightly kind of, um, in, a, well, in, a, in a big sense of kind of grayness, <laughs> different shades of gray. Um, and I think that's kind of how we have to be thinking about blockchain games in this kind of quite nuanced, um, sophisticated way, um, at least while we wait and see um, how, the, how the kind of sector pans out, um, which will happen, I guess, over the, part, over the next kind of six, six to 12 months, I guess we'll kind of get a bit more um, kind of clarity in, into the direction that people want to go in. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, blockchain gaming world is all about the world of blockchain games. We delve into what's going on, try and make sense of um, uh, the kind of the trends, try and look at data to help us in that regard. So if you're interested in blockchain games, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any comments, please put them in the comments box. Uh, but thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.